Good morning. Uh, I want to thank uh, South Puget Sound Community College and Sean Barnes for mounting this virtual exhibit. Um, it's my first time doing anything like this, and um, we'll try to make this time valuable for you so you can get a sense of the questions that Sean wanted me to address, which is a little bit about my process and how I worked and some of the uh, actual drawings in the show, maybe talk to you about those. But I want to begin by talking about how in my career as an artist, which started in high school when I was 14, um, I was uh, constantly confronted with uh, blank canvases, blank pages, and that, that continued throughout my entire life, uh, long life, thank the Lord. Um, that maybe over 60 years or more, I was wondering about how to fill a page. And thank, thankfully, I did have a lot of thoughts and ideas, um, but it was, after a while, a lonely event for me. And I learned how to work into, at first, um, painted surfaces, washes on blank canvases, so that I had a sense of an interaction between myself and something else beside the whiteness. Uh, and when I learned that I could make monoprints um, using a variety of textural surfaces to create patterns and uh, textures on paper that had no apparent design or uh, meaning that I could work with texture and shape and light and dark without having a thought in my mind of what it was I was trying to do other than cover the page with textures. In the past, of course, I thought I'm going to make a figure or I'm going to make a landscape or I'm going to make the water moving in and out of um, Totten Inlet or uh, I am going to make some paintings that respond to Diebenkorn, or I am going to make some paintings that um, capture the spirit of my uh, training when I worked at Cooper Union with abstract expressionists and so on. There was always some sort of agenda that I would somehow formulate and bring into a surface or a pattern or into a process. My agenda became simply in the past 15 years, 10, 15 years, to create textures, many of them, on many separate images, pieces of paper, like this. So the, the work you're going to see now is basically drawings that I have made that have come out of the dialogue between myself and the textures. And I'd like to, to begin with an image that's actually in the show that's called Water's Voice. In the first image, you'll see a figure uh, emerging out of a round, textured surface. There's the, uh, the indication of another figure behind the, the figure that's in the foreground. That was a, such a strong uh, presence to me, this person. And as I said, there are no persons that I know or nothing in particular that I'm trying to do except catch up with what the textures are telling me. And there is the figure. And as you look at the next image, you will see that the figure is holding a pole and that pole is on fire. Um, I, I saw the indication of the fire in the first image, very light lines against the dark surface. And I didn't know quite what they were, of course. And then I thought, it's got to be fire. And so I made a, a torch and the person behind the person in the foreground is now uh, slowly becoming an angel. Now, a lot of people think, oh, it must be your Catholic background. It must be something that you're doing about praying. It must be something in your consciousness that's working. And, and I have no answers to any of those things. I just see the wings and I see, wow, there's an angel there. And in the final drawing, the person is carrying a cup of water. And it was this image that helped me understand how I could show 
a series of work in this exhibition about cups. Because sometimes in many of my images, animals, objects, and things appear, but I never make a connection between them, or rarely. I just say, oh, there's another goat, or there's another angel. But this time it felt like the cups were important, and I had a few finished drawings that I could bring into this uh, small show of my work of uh, five pieces. The next one you'll see is an image called, I Heard My Name Called. And in that image, there is a quite gorgeous person, I believe, um, offering what feels like a glass of milk to this part human, part animal creature. In the background, another creature is moving by them. And it feels that there is something in this image that creates an atmosphere of welcome, of safety, and of aid, the idea of having aid, that cups might be connected with aid of some sort. In this next image, called eating rice, it's a fairly large texture that I started with, and it, um, it, it felt like a very large textural form that had no context. And as I started tracking the form itself, I realized that I was drawing the contour of a person sitting down. And that person was sitting down in a morass of textures that became curtains, that became uh, a floor. The person had their feet on the floor. And that person looked to be eating something. And I saw that it had in its hand a bowl of rice. And I did the best I could to create this, what felt like a peek into somebody's life that I was in some odd way enamored with. In this image called the cup bearer, she is on a porch. And she's holding up a cup and pointing to it. And again, I am as uh, puzzled about many of these images as you may be when you look at them and well, what is that for and so on. But I, 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 although I've been interested in symbols and symbology for many years, um, just because they have an iconic and um, sort of archetypical uh, core that I relate to, even though the trying to think about them or having uh, ideas or studying them in a scholarly way has never been anything I could do. I've tried, believe me, I've tried. I've read about them and so on. And then I go back to my drawing and it's I've totally forgotten everything that I just thought about. And I'm dealing with should that be red or green or should that be round or oh dear but this particular one seemed to have some um, magical properties that somebody was pointing to the idea that there is a kind of spiritual history that we can uh, have access to a history of uh, not only spirit, but science, that somehow these things would come together to create energy or power that we could have, we have access to, through the cup, the cup bearer. The next image is the image of two women holding a chalice. This is a rather small texture I started with, and again, the presence of these these characters uh, was very strong. Um, they almost were saying, hello, Marilyn, we want to show you this chalice. I, I'd like to make uh, another comment about an image that I made that's not in the show that helps me speak to you about influences that have been of great 
uh, significance in my life. The biggest influences were going to come from science, psychology, philosophy, anthropology, in my experience. That somehow the efforts of scholars who are working in very different fields added to my work in ways that uh, were extremely important. And one of these is um, the work of Carl Jung. I, I learned about Carl Jung through my work uh, as a Progolf consultant teaching writing for many, many years. And the, uh, the actual uh, key premise or uh, a functioning reality of that work was to trust images that come to you, to trust them. And I did so for many years, experimenting various ways in writing and writing poems and so on. But through the textual work, images literally came to me right out of there. And at first it seemed, how could I continue to work on this image if I don't understand it, if I don't know it with my mind? I may feel it in my heart, but I don't really know it. And I sometimes don't even know how to do it, but do the best I can. Uh, I learned to do that over the years because it created for me um, a kind of work that was not lonely. It was a dialogue. It was myself, the image, and then the process or the technique, and how do I bring all this together. Um, so over the years, many images have come that seem to me uh, prophetic in odd ways. And it's only in retrospect that I look back and I say, oh my God, look at that. <laughs> yes, of course, the birds will be riding on the backs of ponies one day. Um, but I want to show you an image that I did in the summer of 2019 that really confused me. It's called Figments. And figments there, a figure is holding what I thought was a mirror, a, an empty frame. Perhaps that's an artist looking for subject matter, uh, being led somewhere by an elephant. And uh, I saw the little white forms as being uh, like thoughts, little thoughts that were being hunted or looked at or something. It didn't satisfy me very much. I liked the drawing a lot, but I didn't quite get it. I didn't. Time goes by, and here we are, April 2020, and we are all staying at home and asked to help create face shields for people at risk in hospitals. And I looked at the image completely differently, that the person is behind a shield and the little white dots are the virus, that the person is trying to move with the guidance of animals who hopefully are not affected through the world. You may have a, a completely different idea about this, but. It was quite astonishing for me one day to look at it recently, just recently. Oh, there, there is a shield. The other thought I had or observation I had as a result of our stay at home, changed upside down world right now, is that the identity that I have been somehow developing my sense of self myself of context in terms of my work and its value in the world is shifting, is changing. It's almost as if it's recomposing in front of my eyes. And I am trying to find my way now between my, it's almost as if I have to hear and speak a different language. in my work, in my thoughts about my work, and its relationship to the people around me and in the world.